G'day. Hello there. I'm Ozzy Robbo. I'm Nicholas Chen. And welcome back to a new vlog where we are going down under. Yes, yeah, so this has been a long time coming. We've been together for over 10 years and I've never been to Australia. He's returning. This time we're taking two trips with Qantas. Yes, two on two different days. So come see how our experiences with Qantas differ as I travel on one day, he travels on another and it's going to be a lot warmer as well. <laughs> It is travel day and um, yeah so as we explained in the intro uh, we're both going on separate flights over two days apart from each other so I'm going to be going from home to Heathrow via the Elizabeth line uh, which goes direct I'll be taking it with me and then Rob will be going on Saturday evening so we've both got the same flight but on different days so you'll be able to get a comparison of what it's going to be like service wise um, both are just under 24 hours including a stop off at Singapore which is about an hour and 40 minutes stop off um, yeah packed and ready to go this is a very different flight for me this is my first time in Australia so I'm very very excited um, so I've got lots of goodies to take on the plane with me like my Nintendo switch I've got an iPad full of movies and TV shows and books and comics so I'm about to get ready to set off uh, so go to the Jubilee line to Stratford and then Stratford on the Elizabeth line all the way to Heathrow. So here we are at Terminal 3 and we're used to this terminal because it's right next to Terminal 2 just there in the background. So that's normally where we go to Disney World and Florida and New York etc but this time we're going with Qantas, um, a night flight of course um, with a stop off at Singapore which I'm actually quite looking forward to which is about 13 hours in for an hour and 40 minutes and yeah so we're at Terminal 3 and it's C, that we're heading for. I've already checked in online, um, so hopefully it should be smooth. Uh, security, no idea, but I'm sure it's going to be heavy checks. Just like that, I'm through security, which is always my, I hate it. I absolutely hate the check-in and I absolutely hate security. So um, now that's all done and dusted, I can relax. Um, it's the most anxiety riddled thing that always goes, Rob laughs at me because I get so like, I look like guilty from the start. And went through really quickly. Considering how busy it is, I was really shocked at how quickly I went through. Even had a full body scan and um, full uh, pat down, which was very fresh. Uh, but now we're into duty free. So I think first we're going to have a look at some smellies. Um, I wouldn't mind something for the trip. I've got a few on me. I've got some sample size as well, which is always handy. Oh, there's actually a sale section, but I don't think they ever have anything I want. Currently, you can win a diamond with um, Toblerone of all things. Lordy, it's shiny. Um, I might actually get some chocolate and stuff for the flight because I forgot to pack some bits and bobs. Ooh, sunglasses. I've got three pairs to take with me to Sydney because it's very warm out there at the moment, about 41 degrees. Go and get what we really want, which is sweets and snacks for the journey. As you can see, I've got, as you can see, I've got a backpack, a small backpack by Superdry. And then I've got my, I've got my um, carry-on luggage, hard shell suitcase, um, because I'm going to have a change of clothing, and then also it means I can have the small bag as my personal item, and it'll go at my feet. So I found one of my favourite places to eat, well actually Rob and my's favourite place to eat, which is Wagamama's. So let's have a look. So I'm seated, and I think I know exactly what I'm going to have. I said it's about a 20 minute wait for the food to come after ordering, so I'm going to go for one of my favourite, which is a Dunbury, which is the uh, shoe shop chicken. That's quite nice and light, and it's got lots of flavour. And then I think either cherry blossom lemonade. Yeah, I think I might go for a cherry blossom lemonade. Lovely cherry flavour. Really, really crisp. And yeah, it does, it does actually taste like a mocktail, well, cocktail. Yeah, really good. I'd give that four out of five Kenobis. So that's uh, my evening meal. I'll probably get another one on the plane. Uh, but that's my evening meal, little snack um, at Wagamama's. So it was uh, 23 pounds in total, including uh, drink, main, and tip. Uh, so I, I tipped 15%. She was really good. Sue was awesome. So if you ever get Sue, she was amazing. All right, so we're heading to gate one. So she's the furthest away, of course. Um, I don't think I've ever actually been down this way before. So this is, uh, it's really busy here tonight, which again is why I'm surprised that we got through, well, I got through security so quickly. 
because it was so packed. Um, Check-in was even really quiet, but then that was just the bag drop-off. So while I got the chance, I decided to get changed into my loungewear, um, so I'm not having to struggle when I'm on the plane in the bathroom. So I've swapped all the things over into my backpack. Uh, so like my things like my Nintendo Switch, iPad, cables, sweets, uh, tablets, everything you need. Um, yeah, so I've done a full swap. So I'm wearing kind of like a so that's Crocs on, party on. See you on the other side guys, waiting to uh, let economy in. And uh, yeah, quite exciting now, changed into my loungewear. Um, so this is the start of my travel day. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a hectic one. So uh, I'm only just recording once I'm getting to Singapore. My travel day started on the Elizabeth line. Uh, it was a bit of a dash in Stratford to run for the Elizabeth line. Once I was on there, it was fine. Uh, just a straight journey into uh, Heathrow. Then I made it to Terminal 3, where I checked in at the Qantas lounge, or the Qantas desk, sorry. The Qantas desk wasn't so easy for me because I have a British passport and an Australian passport. I didn't have a British visa, so I couldn't just go through that scanning check thing, which made it a lot quicker. I then had to go in the line, so it was a bit of a delay for me getting checked in and getting up into duty free. Security was fine. Uh, it was actually one of the quickest securities I've been through in a long time, actually. So uh, yeah, it was quick, quite quick. And then I was in duty free, had a bit of a look around at the uh, aftershaves and sunglasses. Uh, and I actually found, had a bit of a look at Super Dry and uh, yeah, a couple other places. But I went for something to eat just like Darren, I went to Wagamama's, uh, my favorite restaurant. So I went and got uh, the same thing he did actually as well the other day, shoe shock chicken. Uh, really good, really good uh, shoe shock chicken. It was a bit bizarre because he kind of felt like they were dumping all the uh, single people who were by themselves at the front of the restaurant and uh, all the other people going kind of further in. So we were kind of just looking out at a, a construction site that was across, uh, that's been there for like a year, I think. Uh, doesn't seem to be developing at all. But um, no, the meal was great. And then I had been thinking about a pair of sunglasses that I uh, wanted to treat myself to. So I went back to the uh, duty free shop, the Ray-Ban one in the center. So there's a few, few stores that sell uh, sunglasses in there. Although my understanding is that I believe that they're all kind of owned by the same people. I then made my way over to the gate. So it was gate one. So even though you would think gate one would be quite close, it's actually not that close. Uh, they were actually boarding as soon as I got there. So I kind of just made it on time. I was at the back of the plane. I was boarding first. I think this, this plane has two levels, split levels. So all the uh, economy are on the bottom, bottom level uh, on the ground. And then uh, the first class and business class, or whatever classes they have, are all on the uh, upper deck. So we're now boarding. Bit of a queue. We're in 84. So that's the first leg done. Uh, yeah, that was a weird flight. It was the warmest plane I've ever been on. So I'm, I'm all layered up with like sort of thermal uh, sort of tops that keep you regulated and like a hoodie. Um, yeah, I was really warm. Um, I did actually manage to get a bit of sleep, which I was surprised about. Yeah, the service was good. I wasn't impressed with the meals, sadly. Um, considering what Australia has to offer in regards of food, it just wasn't very flavorful. A um, little boring, a little dull. Uh, so it comes served on like a sort of plastic rimmed plate, like acrylic, and then you've got like a roll, no butter, um, chocolate brownie, which I actually love chocolate brownie. It, does, it feels quite heavy and moist, so that's good. Moist. Um, and then you've got the couscous, pesto chicken, and then the salad, and then a dressing here. I'm not a fan of cucumber, so I'll probably be skipping that and going through that with a uh, fork. And then just a Coke. Probably not the best thing to have before going to sleep, but I need something just to uh, wet me with salt. Oh, the salad was actually quite tasty. Uh, the, I like couscous, and that was actually quite nice and refreshing. Um, I would have preferred something that was maybe warm, like a warm salad would have been nice, like even if just the chicken was warm. Um, but no, it was fine. I didn't want anything heavy. Um, I'll give that two out of five Kenobis. So not the best, but not the worst. Um, and then the brownie, sizable, um, quite rich, 
but not very enjoyable. It was, yeah. Drinks wise, because it's a through night thing, you basically the blinds are down. The blinds are down the whole time, which is great because it regulates, you know, people aren't getting sort of thrown off by the changing light. Um, but it does cause an issue where if the lights are off and there's no light coming from outside and etc you are literally in the pitch black and then if you put the light on above you it blinds everybody which isn't fair um, which some people were doing um, a lot of people <laughs> well a certain group of people behind us were disregarding the fact that people want to sleep um, and it went on for what would have been what 3 a.m. UK time. Um, I think they blacked out at one point, which is great. Um, so good morning. Um, hopefully you can hear me. Um, so had about three to four hours sleep. Managed to watch a few TV shows. Uh, one in particular of Apple that started this week called The New Look. Um, all about Christine Dior and Coco Chanel in occupied France. World War II and then aftermath. Nearly well, it's about 5 p.m. in Singapore, which we're going to be landing in just over an hour, um, and we've served breakfast. So for breakfast we have so as well as an orange juice and a apple and cinnamon muffin with a traditional Greek yogurt uh, with berries and arenola. We've got the main course, which is scrambled eggs with bacon, Cumberland sausage hash brown and roast tomato so actually I'm quite impressed with this because um, sometimes you just get like a you know like a, a, a sort of a, a roll or a, a bap with some bacon in so yeah I'm quite looking forward to this um, body's going to be a bit shocked I think because it's all over the place uh, with time differences um, but yeah let's get let's uh, get started so breakfast um yeah, not the most enjoyable. Uh, bacon was very overdone and dry. Uh, hash browns were also dry. Eggs were all right, but a bit congealed, kind of feel. Um, sausage was nice. So, yeah, so two, two out of five Kenobis. Orange juice is nice, though. Yeah, so, onwards to the next part, which is, so we're now in Singapore. So we were all kind of uh, going in at different, different, uh, two different entrances. Yeah, I had a, a nice Asian couple sitting next to me who turned out to be from Singapore. So they were flying home, so they won't, they won't be on the second leg. But I wonder if uh, those, those seats are actually booked for uh, some other people. Once we got in the sky, it was fine. It was left on time. Uh, it took about an hour to get drinks and food, which was okay. I think they came around with water first, actually, and they came around with those little packs. Uh, I'll show you the, the breakdown of the pack, but it's a little pack with a toothbrush and toothpaste and earbuds and uh, the, the, the goggle things, you know, cover your eyes, eye, eye covers. So those, those, that was good. I never actually used any of those things, but uh, <laughs> it was good to get them because uh, on Virgin they don't seem to be giving out those out anymore for, e for economy, only if you, uh, only if you get uh, premium or above. And then the food. So I chose to have the beef and actually the meal was really good. It's it served in a compact little, very small tray. So I don't know if they're trying to save money on trays as well, but uh, the tray was very small, uh, very compactly organized, but the meal was great. Uh, the beef was really well cooked, very soft, great sauce. Uh, had some roast potatoes on the side. They were quite dry until you managed to get through a few of them and then you managed to get to the sauce down below, which is also for the meat, and then it was really nice. And uh, the vegetables were, were soft and hot, but not overcooked, so that was good. Uh, I actually thought it was quite a decent meal for a flight meal. I'd give that a uh, four shrimps and a barbie. Yeah, that's not bad actually. I was surprised. Uh, the bread, the bread was a bit weird. It was a ciabatta, and uh, I think they put the butter on top, or they put it in the middle somehow. But you didn't get butter with it. But uh, it, it did feel a bit dry and greasy when you're eating it. Uh, and then the dessert was a brownie, which is okay, yeah. It was a standard brownie, wasn't anything special, nothing to write home about, but it was okay. But uh, yeah, I quite enjoyed the meal, fair-sized meal. And um, then we just kind of all 
I, I was watching uh, I was watching Fargo, the first couple of episodes of Fargo, the latest season. I've never actually watched the TV show, but this one's quite good so far. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to work out where it, it's kind of it was kind of a bit of Home Alone mixed in with other stuff uh, going on there. Some of the plot points are a bit uh, obvious, but um, no, it's, it's actually well shot, uh, great acting so far, so I'm quite enjoying it. Uh, then I tried to sleep. It was a bit of a disaster going in and out of sleep because I was against the wall. That's that's what I wanted. I wanted against the window so that I could um, you know kind of rest against the window. I managed to get about three hours I think on and off, but it was very broken up. Uh, there was lots of babies crying in various places uh, during that period and then uh, there was like a one of the air conditioning vents right near us was making a lot of noise so I could just hear this rattling the whole flight and when you're trying to sleep I could just hear it the whole time and then it's that thing of uh, you know your bladder's getting a bit full but you have to kind of wake up the people next to you which I didn't want to do so I just kind of uh, you know sat there you know wanting to go to the toilet as well so uh, yeah not much sleep. 12 hour flight, I haven't done one of those in a long time. It's normally, you know, seven or eight hours is the longest stretch that we've had so far flying to America. So maybe it's 12 or 13, I'm not even sure. But that was the longest one. Uh, but, you know, uh, woke up, got breakfast, and actually the breakfast was a really, really good meal. Really large meal. Um, bacon, eggs, scrambled eggs, really nice. Uh, the bacon was looking, it looked overcooked, but it tasted fine when I had it. Uh, I wouldn't complain about it. Um, had a tomato in there, sausage, and uh, and hash brown. And uh, that was a fairly decent meal, actually. Considering it's plain food, you know, you, you, you can't have high expectations for economy plain food. So um, I think it kind of, you know, went above those expectations. Uh, so I'd give that, I'd give that a solid three and a half, maybe even a four. But uh, yeah. Yeah, it was a decent meal, and um, and it also came with a muffin, which was quite soft, quite small, but you know, quite soft. But it, it, you know, that that muffin going with the rest of the meal really filled you up. And then you actually got a, a yogurt with some stuff on top as well. So it's a really decent meal compared to what you used to get on the Virgin flight to America. Um, is my only comparison. I guess they think it's a long flight, but yeah, it's a decent decent breakfast going on there. And then we landed in uh, Singapore, so we were 45 minutes ahead of time. They kept us in the air for a little bit, circling overhead. Uh, but yeah, came down. It was surprising to see all those boats in the water. You know, I guess there's, it's an island surrounded by lots of small islands, but there are lots of boats all over the place as well. Uh, lots and lots of boats. And uh, I've just been walking around the uh, airport now. It's, uh, it's, it's quite a cool little... In Singapore, uh, so you get off the plane, you take all your stuff with you. Uh, there's a sign as you get off the plane at the end of the corridor that tells you if you're going onwards to Sydney, you take a right turn um, and basically it tells you which gate to re-enter so there's no kind of security as such when you get off there's not any of the immigration things so don't worry about that a lot of the people around us were all first time sydney flyers um so we we're all kind of a bit like hmm what happens now um so i've done a bit of a walk and had a bit of a freshen up so now i'm wearing i'm representing aussie so Anybody who's into In Excess and Kick, one of the greatest albums of our time, um, please comment below. Uh, yeah, so um, I've had to change clothing. I've gone back into jeans because the um, joggers were nice on this flight, but I think that when we're on the next leg, uh, I'm probably better off just having jeans rather than faffing around changing on the plane. Um, and then just change a t shirt, taking my hoodie off, have that for extra cushioning if I want to go to sleep. Um, and then, yeah, so we've got, let's have a look at what is on the board. Not this similar to anywhere else. You've got your usual sort of uh, knick-knack shops, perfume place, Capri Smith. Um, some different foods, like lots of meat-based eateries. Uh, dis discover Singapore. Never really thought about going to Singapore, to be honest. Uh, Starbucks, if anybody's craving that Starbucks kick. I'm staying off tea and coffee for the whole flight because I'm trying to keep down the old um, feeling blown up because I, I get really uncomfortable. Uh, but yeah, you've got all these Singapore bits. And now it seems we're into the stretch which has all the labels. So you've got Gucci, Burberry, Burberry, Balenciaga, 
Boss, Hermes, um, some others of Popeyes for those who go to the US on a regular basis. Yeah, this is where all the money is. We've got Full Dragon, you've got Louis Vuitton, which is gorgeous. It's really cool lighting. And then you've got fish ponds, like um, the fountains, and oh, that's cool with the whirlpool. There's actually live fishing here. That's really cool. Oh, Tiffany and Company, Tiffany and Co. Um, that's a really cool design on the. It's like a weird lattice kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I'm a lot more impressed at Singapore's shopping experience than I am Heathrow. Heathrow is appalling. So here at Zhangchi, there's a um, thing called the Jewel, which is like a giant waterfall. Um, no idea where it is, so I'm not going to risk going. I might sort of see if we can make it on the way back. Um, but yeah, you can get like a commemorative medallion. Lots of vending machines as well for little bits and bobs. Therefore, it's very, very uh, spacious. A lot of space in here, especially compared to places like Gatwick and uh, sorry Heathrow. Heathrow is really awful, I think, especially Terminal 3. I'm not a fan of Terminal 3. Maybe the other terminals are better, but uh, Terminal 3 isn't great. But, you know, Singapore Air, Air, Airport is, um, yeah, at least, uh, at least this side of the airport is really nice. I guess they've got the Jewel. I think it's called the Jewel. You have to get a, a, a shuttle over there, but yeah, I think you have to go through immigration. I didn't really have enough time, so I just kind of walked around the shops. I walked outside for a little bit. Uh, it was actually really, really hot outside and uh, really muggy, really sweaty. Uh, I've actually been to Singapore. This is the fourth time I guess I've been through, where I, you know I, we, I used to come three times when I was a kid uh, with my parents. Uh, when you think about it, it's a strange place to come back to all the time for a holiday. But when we used to live in a mining town, that's where we used to come to, is Singapore. So I've been here quite a few times as a kid. Uh, and uh, yeah, it is, it is really, really hot. Uh, and I guess, you know, very uh, humid as well. But I'm now just by D46, which is where the plane's going from. I can see people starting to go into the, uh, starting to go into the uh, uh, waiting area. So I'm going to head over there now and uh, go on to the second leg of the flight. I'm hoping there's no one next to me. I'm hoping I'm going to get lucky, but uh, fingers crossed. So we've done security and we're back on the flight, just waiting to get taxied out. And then it's about seven hours to Sydney. So a few options for the main tonight. Uh, we've got plant-based dining, pen cauliflower ragu, roast red capuscum and parsley, uh, braised beef briskets, and Sichuan sauce with egg noodles and chilli. I nearly went for that, but actually what I've gone for is a Singapore roast chicken rice and oyster sauce vegetables. And that comes with a herb bread and a peach and almond crumble slice. I can't decide if I'm hungry or not, so I probably won't eat at all, but anyway, let's have a look. So, review of the main course was, it was actually better than the previous ones. Um, I would give it a solid 3 out of 5 Kenobis. Yeah, I'm also ready for a bit of a sleep, because it's going to be around 6am when we get there, so um, I'll have the rest of the day in Sydney ahead of me. Well, good day, as Ozzy would say, Ozzy Robert would say. Um, so today is Sunday, um, Saturday was my arrival, got into Sydney around 6am and it was, uh, yeah, it was a tiring day, obviously you get the jet lag, it hits you hard, but I had a little bit of a snooze in the afternoon after being picked up by our good friends, Justin and Paul, um, spent some time playing with, uh, doing gunkle duties, um, playing Barbie, which was great. Um, had a bit of a drive around with Justin and the girls around uh, Centennial Park, which is beautiful. The, the park life here is amazing. Um, yeah, really impressed. Uh, and then last night, uh, we got to go and have some food on Bondi Beach and had the amazing Max serving us, who was just, he was great. He was so, uh, yeah, he was fun, camp, and attending to the girls' needs throughout um yeah 
it was a it was a really good laugh and the food was amazing um so it's things like pasta and pizza probably will try and get a visit back in there because it was beautiful beautiful um food i ended up having the uh gnocchi with bolognese ragu and a focaccia bread with oil um we also had calamari that was that was the best i could have carried on eating all that we shared it and i could have eaten loads of it um but yeah um the process of getting through going back to when we got into sydney the process of getting through security and immigration was a chore um there were queues 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 they have a different process here it's i guess it's kind of something that should work really well it's a bit like going to a deli counter you take a ticket you get processed via machine but there's just queues everywhere it's like a mass hysteria of which ones to get into um, and they'll try to steer you further on down the hallway to more machines but I, I, I wasn't fooled by it and sure enough I did the right thing because the queues were even longer there um, so you process yourself at one of the machines they take your details and your passport details and then you go to stage two and you kind of it makes you skip everything and you go through the then the sort of the scanners where you and you, they give you a t the ticket you've been processed will go through and it kind of speeds things up a bit so that was actually all right apart from my ticket kept being spat out for no reason and there was no one else there to help so i got to queue about 40 people behind me um all impatiently trying to get through to get their bags etc um but a very nice lady came over sorted that out so yeah cool um then normally i'm used to sort of getting baggage and then leaving you go you know nothing to declare etc theirs is uh, uh, it's not it's not fit for purpose you've got hundreds of people going through the same exit and you get processed with um first of all the card you were issued at the machine but also your identity card that you filled out as a visitor um and you hand those over and then they essentially put you through scanners again and then you're out some people weren't lucky and they end up having to go and get fully inspected so something to bear in mind because uh, they australia are very and rightfully so they are very strict on things being brought in even things like the shoes you wear if you've been um walking in certain types of soil or you've been working on farms then they need to know um and you're better off declaring things and not getting in trouble than you are to try and sneak anything in so yeah there's that um very busy airport uh, but beautiful uh, yeah, i really really enjoyed the sort of the experience of you know arriving in that particular airport and then it was like a quick drive through sydney um to where we're staying which is our friend's house with justin paul then we went to bondi beach again like i say it was brilliant and i got to try out my new leg cover so for those who are new to the channel i have a sort of a partial disability especially in my right leg um various issues but mostly it's a case of i need compression on my leg at all times um i have dressings on there as well and uh it makes it very difficult to do things like swimming and going in the sea and just and just walking on ground which is like damp etc so i invested in some sort of outdoor uh, waterproof socks so there's a two thing i'm going to do this holiday hopefully to get me back into the sea after many many years um i've got a waterproof sock which is just for wearing for paddling um insert video here of how that went testing it and it looks ridiculous but hey vanity goes out the window um and then i've also got like a a large rubber cover that you suck all the air out of with a pump thing and it basically makes a seal around any dressings and legs you know anything you've got the shoes with limbs so hopefully that should work because i'm planning on hopefully going lots of swimming and lots of fun in the sea um bondi beach was awesome I'm looking forward to exploring more beaches because there are so many out here to, to find and discover and that's probably the most touristy one but it was all chilled that's my uh, I think for me the chilled atmosphere is everything here um, I'm looking forward to trying lots of new food um, and meeting new people um, it, today should have been fair day which is the start of the Mardi Gras festival sadly it was cancelled so um yeah uh onwards with sunday and then robbo old rob has uh, left 
the UK about an hour ago. So he's going to be here tomorrow morning about 6am and we'll get to learn what his journey was like as well. So, so. cut to 12 hours later when I have arrived in Sydney. Uh, I've uh, got to the house and uh, had a shower and uh, just heading out. But how did the rest of the flight go? Well, when I last saw you guys, I was just about to go into the uh, departure lounge in Singapore, which you'd think would be pretty straightforward since we'd already got, we, we were just, it was a connecting flight, so I hadn't actually gone out or anything. I hadn't uh, gone through immigration or anything like that. But there was a bit of a wait to get in to the departure gate. And in Singapore, when you go to a different departure gate, or actually the same one even, you have to go back through security. So weirdly, I had to go through security again, even though I hadn't really gone anywhere, uh, which is kind of strange. And they're a lot more strict on liquids over there as well. So even if you say bought a bottle of water or a drink or anything like that, and you want to go back onto the departure gate, you would have to get rid of that because there's no liquids allowed. And they actually went through my whole bag looking for something that wasn't there. And it turned out just to be like a little kind of glass spray bottle to uh, clean glasses with. So that was kind of weird. Uh, then boarded the plane and uh, when I got to my seat, which was the same seat as I'd flown from London, uh, there was already a family sitting in my seat. There was two adults and four, three kids, uh, all of the kids under three or three years old, I think. And they'd taken my seat and it was kind of a bit weird. It's one of those things, situations where, it's one of those situations where there's a lot of Buzzfeed articles and things like that about people taking the wrong seats and stuff. So, like I said, they were in my seat what do you do? Do you kind of make kick up a fuss and say, actually, I booked that seat a long time ago before you guys have booked your seats? Or do you just let it slide? And actually, I just let it slide. And I kind of sat down. I already had a feeling, a bad feeling, that it was going to be a, a bad flight with these guys. And um, the parents were nice enough people, but the kids were horrendous and making noise the whole time and waking me up. So the flight wasn't great. It was pretty terrible in terms of trying to get sleep for the last leg and wake up, you know, in the morning arriving in Sydney but the food uh, so I had the beef the beef and noodles uh, wasn't too bad it was all right yeah uh, a little bit of spice in there a, bit, a few chilies uh, I didn't think it was as great as the, the meal I had on the, the first leg the bigger leg um, and again it had the bread with the uh, garlic butter inside the bread which is kind of weird <laughs> um, and uh, the dessert I think it was like an almond type little sponge thing and I wasn't too impressed by that, but that was fine, whatever. Uh, so for that, I'll give three and a half shrimps and a barbie. So yeah, definitely a better meal on the first leg, but you know, all the same, the Qantas food overall was uh, pretty consistent, I think. No? I think I came. But you'll see that later. <laughs> um, seen and then the, they did have the snack area, but the snack area was different for the first time. So I didn't explain on the first flight. On the first flight, the snack area was really great, actually. They had drinks there. They had uh, brownies, they had these packets of like uh, pretzel type things. Had a few different things there. I didn't get there. You didn't get there? Oh. So it was actually quite good. Um, on the second leg, it was a bit more haphazard, I would say, is what the word I'd describe with. They kind of had the drinks there. They had these soy edible things. And um, they'd kind of put all the, the, the face masks and all that sort of stuff. They didn't bother giving out those packs out on the second leg. They just had them all there in the, in the uh, back. Um, but yeah, the, the, the snack area is quite good actually, where you can just go back. There was one part where the kid was screaming next to me and I just got up. I gave up trying to sleep and just went and got a Coke and um, some of those soy things. And I was like, I'm just gonna have caffeine now because I've given up on uh, sleeping. Um, but overall, you know, the flight was pretty good, I thought. I don't know about your experience, I haven't seen your experience well, this yet. Is this, this is it. As you'll see from mine, switch and reverse. <laughs> yeah, but the people working on the uh, the flight, they were quite good. Um, they were all, all really nice. You know, well. Yeah, all really nice people. Um, you know, the aircraft was fine. The, the USBs don't work, well, this was my experience, trying to charge things. So they're quite useless. Um, the in-flight entertainment, I, I, I watch one film, but most of the time I watch my iPad. The app doesn't work, is my experience. You can't find the Wi-Fi, so you need the Wi-Fi to connect to the app. To Supposedly, you're supposed to be able to play films on their Qantas. Through, through that Wi-Fi thing. Wasn't it? Through the Wi-Fi, but that was did not work at all, so I don't know what that's about. Uh, we'll try again, I guess, on the way there, just to see if it's... It doesn't, seem, it doesn't even find the Wi-Fi, though. That's the thing. No, right? there wasn't any Wi-Fi, no. Not, you couldn't even pay for it, because you couldn't find it. 
So we landed on time, uh, got to immigration, the immigration section, which is kind of weird. Yeah. So they don't really they don't really explain very much before you get there. Step one. You have to fill out the card on the flight. If you don't fill it on the flight, you'll have to fill it out somewhere. But there's a card. There's a to say declare that you're not like carrying like wood or seeds or dirt or all this sort of rubbish. And so you have to fill that out no matter what. Then you get to these kiosks. And I got through pretty standard, uh, whereas my British passport doesn't work in Britain. My brand new Australian passport got me straight through, worked fine. And it gave me a little ticket. So that was step one. Then you go through step two, which is you go through and you put your ticket in and then it takes a photo of your face. And then I guess it just lets, I, I just got let through straight away. So that was very simple for me, quick and easy. Uh, yeah. So the whole immigration thing here works really well for me this time, yeah, as opposed to uh, as opposed to going back to London all the time, which is really terrible. And then uh, baggage, like my bag, was there within two minutes of me getting there. And um, then you go through declarations, customs declarations, and that was really simple for me. I just gave over my ticket, gave over the declaration. Uh, she was really nice. Oh, look at all those bin chickens. And then the next step for me was um, <laughs> the next step for me was uh, finding a taxi to get here. Um, it seems like Sydney Airport doesn't like Ubers because I tried to ask a woman by the taxi stand where you get the Ubers from and she gave me this dodgy direction. I could never find it for 20 minutes so I ended up having to get a taxi which was more expensive than getting an Uber. Um, so that was probably the least impressive part about Sydney Airport but overall it was pretty smoothly getting out. It was an eventful couple of flights yeah. and I'll be interested to see Darren's whole experience uh, when I have a look at the footage. Obviously you saw me go to Bondi Beach on the first night. Yes, there was a quiet day with the family, really chilled early night and then we've been up to let the girls go to school, boys go to work. Um, so we're pretty close, in fact we're very close to Westfield, we've got quite a few Westfields here. There's like an old fashioned sort of shopping We all know district. Darren loves his shopping. I haven't been shopping once yet. Um, so there's an old fashioned kind of like styled shopping centre and then there's a Westfield at the end and then there's also, this is going to be our main haunt for going into central Sydney with the trains and the buses which is just around the corner there. So. For our first venture out, it's pretty straightforward and easy. So fingers crossed the rest of it's going to be like that. So something to note about shopping in Australia is that good. Um, shops close very, very early in Australia. They did in Perth, I didn't know if they did it on this side, but apparently they do it on this side. Lo loads, most shops close at six o'clock in the evening and only Thursday night is late night shopping. Yeah, 9pm 9, 9 on Thursday. Which is why I kind of fell in love with that Bare Naked Lady song uh, one week. And he, he goes, uh, Drove downtown in the rain, 9.30 on a Tuesday night or something. Chicken, Chinese chicken. No, <laughs> just to check out the late night record store. And to me, like a late night record store was like, oh my God, what an amazing, what an amazing yeah. invention to be able to open, just go late nights to a record store. So you, you want to go to McDonald's to show me this famous... So some, something I forgot about is that McDonald's serves frozen Cokes. Oh my God, frozen Coke. I just got, and it's so warm as well. So I really need a frozen Coke. I've been thinking about it all morning. Future? You, apparently, you say this is the thing. This is the frozen cokes. Do you take the lid off, or do you just pop it in there? Well, that's nice. It's basically the same thing that you get at Disney World with the bottle, where it comes out of the vending machine. Right. But it's nice because it's all like fresh and aerated, and yeah. Right. It's quite nice and refreshing. It's good stuff. Because frozen. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. So, Darren, what was your evaluation of uh, McDonald's in Australia? Um, the bacon was better. The brownies. Uh, not brownies, the hash browns were better. Bigger and softer and fluffier. Um, What's your final evaluation of the uh, frozen coke? Frozen coke is five out of five. That is very much needed. Um, I mean, it's like a lot of other frozen drinks, but I actually prefer it because it's not coming out of a bottle and it's all kind of in the cup and yeah. So yeah, for me, that was my first McDonald's in Australia and it was five out of five Kenobis. And I feel very ready for the day. Um, but we're going to have a bit more of a look around this Westfield as well, just to find some bits and bobs. Who knows? So, uh, Darren, what do you bought? <laughs> we went, there's a store called, uh, like a chain called Cotton On. Um, really good. Uh, really good prices on uh, slider shoes, so like sandal. Where, where are we going down? Huh? Oh, oh, okay. oh, maybe we are going down again, yeah. Here you go. So, we wanted some like, s like smart casual slider kind of. Uh, what was it called? Sandals. And they had some on for ten dollars. Ten dollar dues. Oh my god. <laughs> um, and really comfy. And to be honest, if you can't fit them in the bag coming back or if they get damaged, it was ten dollars. So, but we'll put it in recycling, of course. Um, and a beach towel. And a beach towel, which was actually very nice. That was forty dollars, so a bit more, but very soft. Um, and one of my favourite colours, like golden yellow. 
um, and then two sort of what was it, it was like a charity thing wasn't it uh, the, the, yeah just like their bag system five dollar bags we've got two of them for the beach and then i also gave two dollars to charity it's very kind of you came to 47 dollars in total for a pair of sliders and a beach towel and two bags so hello from the future uh so yeah we've come back from our trip but we thought we'd give you a bit of a lowdown on our experiences with Qantas on our first time flying for 23 hours. How did you find 23 hours with the, the break at Singapore? For me, it was, you know, it's a long flight. I didn't get much sleep, especially on the second flight because the people I sat next to were so awful. But the flights were okay. I thought the food was fairly decent on those two flights. Yeah, for me, it was kind of the opposite way around. I didn't sleep very well on the first flight, which is the longest leg. Um, but the second flight, I slept for about five hours, which I've never done before. So that says something. Um, Singapore airport was great little stop off. I'd love to have a bit more time maybe in the future to go and venture around. Um, but Except my, flying back through was the security is really awful. Yeah, the, the security was pretty bad, but it, it's just, I, it was my first time doing it, so I didn't remember it's too much. However, for me, the biggest letdown was the food, because uh, you're eating so many different dishes throughout a 23 hour flight. Uh, lack of refreshments and food was below par. So that's my biggest critique. Uh, for going but of course we've got one a travel day coming back so we'll have to see how that compares to this but please if you've got to the end of this episode and you like what you saw please don't forget to like and subscribe down below uh, we'd love to hear your comments and experiences of your own trips to australia on 23 hour flights whether it be all the way or with a break in the middle we've got loads more coming up some really exciting stuff and um, for me bucket list things as well we've got the blue mountains we've got taronga zoo which is amazing speedboat in sydney harbour speedboat on sydney harbour and maybe some other stuff around the harbour too so please join us next time uh, where we'll be taking you further into sydney thanks for watching bye bye, bye.